getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. To the bottom line, a Friday edition. We make it the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. You can also take us anywhere with the mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. You can also hit us up on Twitter at 107 The Score. All of that welcome there. You can also call us on the Minchmark Hotline, 806-771-0973, or on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, questions, reactions, all that welcome there. Live from the First United Bank studio, I'm Clint Scott, joined by the one and only Chris Need. What a do? <laughs> what a do, y'all. Lucas White behind the glass, taking care of us. I put it on a hockey replay to see how long it would last on there. I'm just curious. You, thought, you put a hockey up there? You really thought I was going to watch hockey? We got we got 30 seconds in. Yeah. <laughs> Text Lucas. I was going to say start the uh, timer, but I didn't even have a chance to uh Nope, nope. Uh, we're really changing start that it chase there. station yeah. right now. That's me changing the station. That was funny. That was good. Man, they had a uh, had Family Feud on before we left? A little before hockey? Certain. Me like no, hockey. No, no, before uh, I, I changed it off. Yeah, of, uh, I, I think that they put it on some, or... some random crap just to see what we'll do. I'll sit here and watch some Family Feud. I'll I mean, tune out. I'm not. I, no, they were they were really talking about the Family Feud and uh, the Price is Right and all these different game shows. The Price is Wrong, <laughs> Bob. Uh, man, those were every, every time I think of those shows, um, I think of being sick on a weekday, like in grade school. Yeah, because like that's what that's when you'd watch it. We'd yeah. watch Wheel of Fortune every once in a while. Uh, there, at, at at night as our evening television intake, but I mean, I'm gonna date myself with a game show that was on in the mid '80s, mm-hmm. and somebody will remember this. It was called Sale of the Century, and Sale of the Century was kind of a cool show. It came on after after the daytime uh, serials, the soap operas, and um, it was basically the concept was if you did everything right, you'd win a house. <laughs> and it was wow. called Sale of the Century. And uh, debuted 1969, September yeah. 29th. Yeah, sale of the century. Yeah, I've never heard of this before. Yeah, is this on, one? It's on uh, like what is it, like the game show network where probably, you can still like watch old reruns. Yeah, and, it's probably you know, like the three o'clock in the morning game show network. It's sale of the century. Uh, Come win a house. <laughs> <laughs> if if you've heard that at this point in the year 2023, you fall asleep on your couch. I and remember the, like, the old the old uh, press your luck shows with Peter Tamarkin. Oh yeah, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. No whammy. That hey, is hey, one big bust, no whammy. Stop! Oh, three thousand dollars plus a spin. And then you have the like little tough acting to acting guy that would like come out the action. You blow up your dollars. And the guy would sit there and go, <gasps> I that's one I, I can't ever actually remember until it's said, so I'm glad you said press your luck, because I just know it is no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. And yeah, it's tough it's press, your luck. press your luck. I think it actually had a different name, like when it was the pilot show had a different name, and then they like workshopped it, focus grouped it, and said, No, it's called press your luck. <laughs> Keep pressing all of your luck. Like, get rid of this guy and get Peter Tamarkin in there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know well, these guys? Do they really? Is somebody's name somebody's Wink Martindale, Peter Tamarkin? They have the most game show Absolutely. host names. So I think we can all agree between all the Raymar talent. If there was a game show host, it'd be Chuck Hines, right? Like you no, can you see him with, with a little Chuck skinny Hines, mic? Oh my goodness! That's right. Wheel of Lumber with your host <laughs> Chuck Hines. Da, 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 da. Look at this studio, full of valuable prizes you can only win right here on Wheel of Lumber. <laughs> Live from the colony, it's a blinded audience. Exactly. He walks out with like a little. Couldn't you see him walking around with a little skinny the microphone? The skinny microphone. The skinny microphone. Oh, he pulled it off. yes, we've got nice prizes. Come on, yeah, come on here. And you know what? He'd kill it too. He would kill he it. He would goes, kill it. He's like, that's right. Hey, Clint Scott, come on down. <laughs> You're the next contestant on Wheel of Lava. <laughs> Did they do like uh, when they were talking about it? Who would your family feud team be mm. from Raymar, or what? What were they just talking about the games they like? I am not that guy. I I would choke under pressure. Really? Well, yeah. They were asked. Well, Haxton asked, "Has there ever been a time where 
when they go head to head and they get it right that they pass it to the other team instead of playing for themselves. Oh, okay. mm. Wait a second, so a team did that? I don't know. Yeah, that, that's that'd like be the, weird. I wanted to even ask this. You know, here's the number one answer. Oh, we're gonna pass. Yeah, <laughs> loser's way out. Yeah. You know what? That's a, that's like a maybe it's like a baller move. Like, hey, here you go. We know you're going to wrong. This <laughs> is gonna come back to us. Gonna, you're going to make Brown in your pants over there, so we're just going to steal this from you. <laughs> he just pulls in the other competitor and whispers into his ear, we're going to have a chance to steal. Exactly. Good luck. Yes, the, the Ashton family over there is waiting to steal here. Man, some of the uh, that like family outfits or whatever that last one was. What are we doing was, here? It was like Yolers yeah. I mean, when there. did this become, we're going to have matching family outfits on the family feud? You know? Yeah. We're all of, uh, of, of uh, certain descent, so we're all going to dress in this, like, ancient family styling and i'm like what is that what are those kilts what are they what are they what's on their heads if if we did like if we as a, as a little raymar family feud we'd have to wear like what like mascots without a head so you can see us and we'd like truly tear it. like the bottom of like raider red and like the bottom of like <laughs> chuck could be little j <laughs> not the big j i don't know we do all of those, right? Wouldn't that wouldn't that fit for us? Because it'd be lame if we just wore like our Raymar polos. I think it would be lame if we wore just our polos. Yeah, yeah. You can hit us up on the Facebook. We gotta spice and... it up. Yeah, we gotta spice yeah. it up. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe just like uniforms, old school dibs on the tearaway click pants. That's what I want. Can I go be the uh, old school high school football coach? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we Still get... a winning costume. Mm, but technically it didn't. Sorry. Stolen from me. Stolen. Uh, should, that should definitely be added to the family feud. Uh, or should definitely add family feud to the Raymar Olympics. That on the chat line. That would be fun. Three on three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would and, be fun. And it, Chuck Hines is the host. Yes. He is. In. And we were going to get him the in. skinny microphone. <laughs> and we're going to do that in the studio. That's going to be in studio. <laughs> It has to be in studio. Yeah, that would, and because th that's like the that's like the only one we could do in the studio. Yeah, right. Unless yeah. it was like, ah, uh, chess is now on uh, the Raymar yeah. Olympics. Boring. Uh, we get this on the chat line from Bullfighter. You choke under pressure, and you think you're gonna smoke me? Not a chance, bud. Hey, hey, Bullfighter, <laughs> racing you ain't pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no pressure in resting you, Daddy. I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> we get a, a couple, a couple of names we're throwing out. Peter T. looked like he'd been up for a week drinking no dose. I, I think Peter Tamarkin probably has had a few nights with the nose candy. I like shortening Peter Tamarkin to Peter T. That's Peter, fantastic. You can't Peter say T. short it to Peter T. That's Peter Tamarkin. <laughs> Stephen also said once saw Wink Martindale at a wedding reception in Arcadia, California. Yeah, I bet you he was high. <laughs> <laughs> not not the, the texture, Wink Martindale. And I'm not talking about the defensive coordinator from the New York Giants. Mm -hmm. It's the bottom line on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com. We'll get into a little NFL playoffs, also a little Texas Tech basketball. Also have Luke's white hot play of the day at 1230, at 1245. It's a Friday edition of Kaylee's Dailies. Keep it right here, 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Back with more next. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. 0.7 The Score, 107thescore.com. When Scott, Chris Need looks white behind the glass, taking care of us. Jackson Roberts also back there. Old Apple Jacks. Jackson, Blackson, Waxon. What's up, man? What How's Mr. Jackson doing today? I'm good. How are you? Is that doing our well. new and improved Jackson, Blackson, yeah, Waxon? Yeah, it's, it's the newer model. Way Jackson, better. Jackson, Waxon, Waxon 2.0. A lot of upgrades. Yeah. Except he's a Houston, Texas California. Fan. Yeah, oh, so Indiana. California <laughs> College. Indiana. <laughs> University of Indiana College of Pennsylvania. California, will it? Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up on the 8th floor and center chat line. Thoughts, what, comments, what questions. Was what was that? So apparently, so apparently, I've been labeled a fat cat now. My, the there was a fat cat. Uh, I'm a fat cat now, apparently. Mm. With choice? No, someone choice. You know, they were talking about 
Woodman's Wallet being a, a horse name. It's really, really weed strain. Weed strain. That, that's a fat <laughs> horse. Woodman's, <laughs> Woodman's Wallet. <laughs> and I guess one of the textures, I guess you can scroll back and find it. One of the textures said that he lived in my neighborhood and I'm the undercover fat cat. He's seen how many cars I drive. <laughs> I was like, okay. Hmm. And then Hack said something, and then Choi said that he was he was just a shtick. A shtick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say you're just a, a shtick when you have a 10-car garage, Choice. I mean. Uh, we get this on the chat line from Steven. Yeah. Once saw Jim Rome at a reception. The little guy was very nice. Uh, is this like a, I mean, running into, you know, brushes with greatness kind of deal? I guess now. It started uh, with the... I played game a, show host. I played a I played a game show at the All Star game with uh, with LL Cool J and Leon. Do you know who Leon is? Mm-hmm. If, if see, I dated myself once again. If you remember, Leon, uh, he was the quarterback in Wildcats. Um, I believe. I believe he was also the the character of focus in uh, Madonna's Like a Prayer video, and he he mm-hmm. had several other uh, um, cameo appearances, but he was. In the in the mid nineties, he was quite the uh, he was quite the dude. He was there everywhere. His name was like Leon. Just Leon. Yeah. Let's see if I can find him there for you, there. Leon. <laughs> <laughs> but I played I played this. Uh, they had they we were we were at this All Star Game Fan Fest, and they were they pulled people out of the audience. Remember, if I told you about the uh, the uh, the autograph deal, you mm-hmm. know, there I told you about that, you know. Uh, but anyway, the point being, oh, there he is, Leon, IMDb. Just Leon. Um, I'm just seeing Leon was in Cool Runnings. He was in Cool Runnings also. Who was he in? Who was in Cool Runnings? One of the one of the bobsled guys. <laughs> I think he was the lead guy. Was he? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think he was the lead guy. Okay. Yeah. Sanka, you dead? Yeah. This, yeah. This cat right here. Okay. Yeah. So I played okay. with I played a, uh, with him. This guy knows nothing about sports. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, we, did we won, not, he did we not help won, at all. Me, see, uh, it's me and Sean Lynn Rose, who was the uh, station manager of KGLR, which no longer uh-huh. exists. But they were the Spurs affiliate. He had to play with LL Cool J. I got stuck with this schmuck. This schmuck didn't know anything about any sports. We won because I answered all the questions. He didn't know anything. <laughs> I'm, it's like, I'm, what are you doing, dude? I'm cracking up right now with the Google entry for him because I yeah. just put in Cool Runnings to look up the cast. Yeah. And... For him, it says just Leon. Like yeah, it's, it's just Leon. Leon. No, Leon. but it's but it's it's typed out the word just. <laughs> just <laughs> the Leon. Leon. <laughs> they did him dirty on there. Yeah. And help him. So someone who was writing that is like, who played him again? It, it's Leon. Leon. Okay, Leon. Who is just Leon? Oh, just Leon. Yes, just so Leon. He's, okay. He's and in, then that idiot typed out just Leon. He's there in, you go. He's in Blue Bloods. Okay. Um. He's in. Uh, oh. Set on a city on a hill, a day to die, the game people play, <laughs> and there's some some other questionable stuff. <laughs> uh, we uh, have a uh, we have this for your and Bullfighter's race from Raider's dad. I have five hundred dollars on Sneed to win. If Bullfighter isn't all talk, ooh. he'll take that bet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I can't make it interesting, but Raider's dad can. <laughs> <laughs> Bullfighter says I'll put more pressure on you than a fat guy sitting on a toothpick. <laughs> hey, hey bullfighter that's funny until it's not <laughs> that's a pretty good line uh sneed tell yeah. me how bad dallas is going to beat san francisco you can lie to me how bad dallas is going to beat san francisco how do you feel about this game <laughs> i think remember how i felt about tampa bay mm-hmm. i really feel that same way about san francisco mm-hmm. this is going to be I don't know what's going to be worse, getting beat for the eighth time by the GOAT or getting beat for the first time by Mr. Irrelevant, which is what's going to happen this weekend. Mm, I, I think it would have Who's been Who's going to cover Greg Kittle? Right. Well, it's not covering. Who, it's tackling. Well, yeah. Point. Who's going to cover him? I guess you're going to get Van Der Esch. You're going to drop Van Der Esch into coverage like you did last week? This is going to be a big Van Der Esch game. It is. It's going to be... They're going to, Van Der Esch is going to have to cover Greg Kittle. Yeah. And, and, and that takes away... The, the run support that he provides. And when when Van Der Esch is in the middle, the Cowboys are a great run-stopping team. Mm-hmm. When he is not in the middle or when he's not playing in the game, the Cowboys give up yards and chucks. 
And that's what, like, if you haven't seen the 49ers offense, for some reason, it's the same it's been for the past five mm-hmm. years, but it's all run game and then play action. And they have a bunch of huge plays when you look at it, but it's all because they've been these short passes. And guys like Christian McCaffrey now, guys like Debo Samuel, guys yeah. like George Kittle have broken the first tackle because they've singled a weak defensive spot out, and then they say, see you later. Exactly. And, I mean, he, um, Van Der Esch has <laughs> the ability to plug that up. The problem is, you know, they've run this scheme for so long with uh, Shanahan, and Shanahan's really good. I mean, he was successful mm-hmm. with Greg Moser. He was successful with Matt Breda. I mean, he's really successful with Christian McCaffrey mm-hmm. running out of because that's a that's a run catch option right there that that he didn't really have with the two previous guys, even though they actually were able to do some of that. The reality is, with uh, with with Van Der Esch in the game having to cover Greg Kittle, mm-hmm. that takes away that that uh, that threat and and. I don't see the Cowboys making the San Francisco 49ers one dimensional. In other words, having to, you know, taking away the run and then forcing them to be a pass first team. And even if they do, that's still not good for the Cowboys mm-hmm. because which one are you going to cover? I mean, I mean, Ayuk, Kittle, um, we just talked about him. Um, Samuel. Uh, Debo Samuel. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, <laughs> with the Cowboys, you, you just lost one of your, your best cover corners in curse. Um, and now you're, and now you uh, you had uh, what's his name uh, our uh, oh thirty nine the guy just got came off the practice squad the other night got got smoked on his first play of the game and he got in there hey look they said oh look new guy off the practice squad let's hit him for thirty five on the first play and they did I mean, and 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 Van Der Esch obviously has to have a huge game but the defensive line has to huge has to have a huge game too because it's not going to mean anything if you don't stop the run in the first place yeah it doesn't um, but that being said. I still think that since McCaffrey has got there about what a third of the way through the season, it was it was mm-hmm. the Chiefs loss that they had, which was the last time they lost, was his first game, which was crazy because he was there like two days. And yeah. I mean, he's such a smart football player. They're like, oh yeah, we can go ahead and throw you in. And he did make a difference in that game. Obviously, not the same impact after he had uh, you know he'd gotten used to the offense and really gotten into the system. Um, but all that being said, this is still I think the best defense they'll have faced certainly in the past seven games really since Brock Purdy took over and to your question because it was what's what's worse was it losing to Mr. Brady possibly would have been the eighth time Mm -hmm. or losing to a a first-year quarterback Mr. Irrelevant I think it would have been worse losing to Tom Brady because Tom Brady was the Buccaneers Brock Purdy is a guy there he's done what you're supposed to but that 49ers roster is top three left in the playoffs and top three in the NFL, top to bottom. So it would have been way worse to lose to Tom Brady. Now, I think you'll have a good showing in San Francisco. I think that San Francisco uh, pulls out a close one. Uh, but I, I don't think that this is going to be the 49ers just running them off the field. And I think the Cowboys certainly have a chance. Now, you have to have the same type of game you just had offensively. And it's not going to be the same just what was crazy to me from the Buccaneers win is how many times you just saw Dallas receivers open. I mean, just, I mean, open way down the field. And a lot of times it was C.D. Lamb. Now, that's partially his route running capability. That's also their secondary was all sorts of lost. Like on a fourth and four, how do you lose a second team all pro? Yeah. And that was when the game was over. But that was just a perfect example. Perfect example. Like, I don't yeah. think you're going to have those situations. Uh, well, you're going to have to play perfectly first, under a lot more pressure. First, San Francisco deep, is defense is better than the Cowboys' defense. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. And I, I I, think that this could be a really, really tough day for Dak. Mm. I mean, kind of like in the first couple of drives, I think he's going to throw a pick. Mm. That would not be uh, bueno. We talked about if we if the Cowboys keep it a high scoring game, they'll be in it. But if it's a low scoring, I think they think that the 49ers are gonna get the win. I think that's yeah, yeah that's a really good. Th- I mean, if it's if it's a ground I mean, and pound back again, and forth type of game, it's not gonna be the Cowboys' well, way. Tyler Smith, they talked about how great he was. Does anyone remember who the who the defensive end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was last week? <laughs> Can anyone tell me who that, the name it's, of that guy? It's not Bosa. Exactly. It wasn't Bosa. His name's not Bosa, and Bosa's gonna be lining up across from mm-hmm. him, and was gonna spend a lot of time in the backfield with Dak. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. You got the bottom line on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Thank you for joining us. Hey, let us up. Let us know 
coming up with your weekend on the East Corners in the chat line. Thoughts, comments, reactions as well. Answers to take versus take questions. I was your take versus take winner. First place. What's up? Do you want to ask Jackson, do you have any particular takes that you would like to add to the take versus take? You heard the three questions. Do you have any that you feel strongly about? Um, I think 50 First Date is a pretty weird movie where the girl forgets and then he keeps trying to convince her to fall in love with them. I think that's a pretty weird movie. That's the first thing that pops into my head. That's a good That's answer. a really good one. That's he, a good one. We were talking about, like, uh, we were talking any, about the lots. backup answer <laughs> is, like, anytime, like, a Disney princess has, like, mysteriously fallen asleep by some sort of curse and, like, the way she gets woken up <laughs> is by getting, like, kissed by some dude she's never met. <laughs> Like, dude, you found a chick asleep, and your first thought was, I should put my tongue in her mouth? Okay. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, it's really weird the more you think about it. Like, the princess wakes up, and she's like, you didn't even take me to a hospital? Who are you? Snow White wakes up. I need to speak to a lawyer. <laughs> WTF, man. <laughs> yeah. That's... I like that. 50 first date's a good answer. Yeah. Uh, we get this. I got this way earlier from Dallas. So much for no rants in 2023. That first need. Yeah, that's 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 gone. That's no no rant. 23 is disintegrated. We got a happy birthday to Gus, an early one. Yeah, happy birthday to Dr. Mike Gustafson. You can hear him on Tech Talk here in about an hour and 13 minutes over on Double T 97.3 when we also, give way to them. Also, lesser known, if you would like to follow along on uh, we stream on YouTube. We also stream all 12 hours of content on the website. So, I mean, front page on both the score and on Double T 97.3. You can catch all 12 hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Should we, for YouTube, start using the phrase like, make sure to smash that like button. It's got to be. And we, subscribe. We have to, like, create a, we have to do the, every presenter duo has to do a thumbnail, too. <laughs> so, like, it's going to be like, <laughs> point here to see the <laughs> Right. <laughs> that is so annoying. I know Quick that, bait. Yes. And the thing is, I know that it works for YouTubers. <laughs> I know that it works. But every time they do that stuff, it makes me roll my eyes so fast. I'm like, how can I fast forward past this part? You won't like, believe what we talked about today. <laughs> <laughs> you really won't. I mean, if you're for being real. That's, today? that's a great description of this show anyways. Anyway, smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe. Get all the latest news at the bottom line on YouTube. Uh, Clay says, uh, Congress of Monkeys explains a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Raider's dad says, juror number three wants to know what kind of car you drive and what time he might find you in the parking lot after work. Uh, you, you threw one on the chat line earlier. I was talking about Benedict's, uh, Cumberbatch's yes. just inability to say penguin. And one that he said was penguin. Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the that's, that's the one that I remember the most. It's, he's like, penguin? Penguin. <laughs> Uh, so were you guys able to get the banner taken down? Not yet. We're still working on it. It's a movement. Uh, Lucas, it's time for your question of the day. Jamie's question of the day on 100.7 The Score is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right. So we're going to talk about Texas Tech basketball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get a time machine for this season, and you get to go back and replace one loss with a win. It can be conference. It can be non-conference. It could be the floor is wide open for you. What game would you turn around, go back in time, and turn around from a loss to a win? It could be a win that builds character for the team. It can be a win that builds momentum, anything that you want. So the floor is y'all's. So... Oh. I'm going to go back and switch, uh, and this was just two games ago, and, and things were, I mean, swirling a little bit at this point, but you're sitting there at 0-4, and, and you just came off a gut punch of a loss to Iowa State, right? Like, you're questioning effort, you're questioning the ability to defend, I mean, you you have just found yourself in a deeper and deeper hole at this point, right? And then you come back. Fardos comes back with his first game. You play really well, but still you fall just short of Texas and you let them come back on you after having a pretty good lead. And they pull that one out 72-70. to 70. Uh, With it being 
a road win and also it being over the University of Texas and what would have been a ranked win, I would have liked to have seen how you move forward uh, just two, two games ago after a win over Texas. I mean, we sat here, uh, and Lucas, I think I think you were behind the glass with us, and, and Jamie asked after that one, okay, well, after a loss, what's your win total right now? Does it change? And it changed for him, it changed for you. It didn't really change much for me. Um, but still, if you had won that one, it would have. It would have changed my number. And you felt so much better after a loss because you responded with, you know, the effort questions, the can you hang with the best teams, can you play on their – all of that, you you answered in a loss. If you had won that game, I mean, I think it really, really would have moved you forward, and also it would have been a rival, rivalry win, and who, who doesn't want to beat the Texas Longhorns, right? right? So for me, give me the road game in Austin. I think for me, it's. And I think it would be this for a lot of people, but it's going to be the, the loss to Kansas, and that's an easy pick, but – I think it makes such a big difference that you hung on and and that's what you did is hung on and as many questions as there were posed in that game you know missed calls injuries that kind of stuff that mm-hmm. that came up if you could turn all of that if that was at the expense if a win was at the expense of those things I think you feel a little better about it but the fact that all of that happened and you lost like you lost because of XYZ mm-hmm. I think it would have just felt a lot better if that game, that game against Kansas, was a win. And and early on, like right now, you're you're still going, but boy, it's just two. You let you let TCU get away from you, but then you had that one. But then you got Kansas back, right? And even then, with the loss, you were still saying at that point, you know, okay, zero and two. Didn't want to start zero and two, but you know, obviously, you played with and hung with one of the best two or three teams in the conference, uh, a, a conference favorite to win and, and you're going we'll get Oklahoma on the next one mm-hmm. right and obviously that doesn't happen but you, you're not feeling how you feel right now remotely at that time I, of the season and I agree I think it was actually on tech uh, on uh tech talk that after the loss to Kansas that's when the questions of zero and five like it's a very real possibility that this team can go zero and five like that started to come up is like do you see this team going zero and five and it was like yes no whatever mm-hmm. But you win that game, and those questions obviously don't come up. And maybe there's hope for picking up more games along the way. You at least feel like you can, whereas mm. after that loss, you realistically felt like we would we would be here where we are. Lucas? So mine actually goes way further back to the Maui Gym Invitational. Mm. I think the mm-hmm. first, if Creighton. Tech could have beaten Creighton in the first round, the momentum there... Uh, top 10 win you're playing against Arkansas in the second round uh, obviously now we look at Arkansas as not being as intimidating as they were back then but I think you beat Creighton in the first round your team gel is stronger y'all are looking like moving forward you can beat anybody obviously because Creighton put up a, a lot of threes uh, I think just snowballing back, I think that kind of put a little uh, little air out of your team, just losing your first round, and then you're already in the loser's bracket. But I think turning around your season could have been that win against Creighton and Hawaii. Well, and you're sitting here looking at the quad one and quad two oh, yeah. cupboard absolutely bare, and just to have one skin on the wall – I mean, to me, would feel dramatically, dramatically better. Jackson, you have a, uh, you have a game that you would have liked turned around. Uh, I think I have to agree with the Kansas game, just knowing that you can, you know, mm-hmm. stay up there with one of the highest ranked teams, um, regardless of whatever situation your season ends up in. Knowing that you're able to do that with the best of the best, like, sends a message and to the team in general. And let's know what you think on the H Point Center chat line. I would venture to guess most people's answer would be the Kansas game. I think so, because especially if they were ranked number two at the time, that you know, you felt like you could hang with the team, you lost to them, mm-hmm. and then the questions from then on are basically, well, we if this team was healthy, you know, mm-hmm. we know what we can do, that kind of stuff. And it's just more ifs than actual answers that we're getting. Well, I guess I need to be more, like careful with my wording because I mean, from those games, yeah, you know you can hang with them. Mm-hmm. 
but can you get over that hump and crunch time and can you pull it out and, and you, you win you, phrasing can you pull one out and you, and you haven't yet right and that's what you're still waiting on because you know that i mean that's why you have so many single digit losses single possession losses i mean i mean a two-point loss a three-point loss go down the list right now against really good teams <laughs> Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Once again, time to play No Diggity. It's that time of day where I throw out a certain situation to Josh Jackson Brennan, and you are fine listening audience with their digitometer to tell us just how much diggity a certain situation has now i have my own this time you have so we, your own. we can give the guest one to to jackson yeah to jackson they, they can split it between jackson okay and yeah right. yeah <laughs> unless have you if, i mean since the last time we talked to you a couple of days ago jackson have you purchased one your own digitometer i have indeed it was on ebay oh <laughs> good <laughs> all right Better it wasn't the one the choice was selling was it because that one's like sticky <laughs> no, it's <was> no. weird <laughs> it's something like once you hold it feels like you're holding it like hmm. All day. It's like when you feel something like a bug on your neck and you feel that bug all day. That's one of those. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Good, good, good. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about this one, Josh, because I'd never heard of this. I just asked, I just said the name uh, Anechoic Chamber, and you started already talking to me about it. So I had never heard of this before. But if you don't know what it is, uh, basically, it is a an extremely quiet, quiet room. In fact, the decibels are measured in the negatives. Uh, and there's one that in the UK that they say, hey, don't stay inside longer than 45 minutes or else you will lose your marbles. Uh, and just recently, the, uh, the record has been broken. Now, it was broken back in 2016 by someone who went a whopping 60 seven minutes and then it was uh broken again by a youtuber smash that subscribe button uh and musician named calyx uh, and he shared his experience now the rules challenge the challenger must be alone in the chamber uh no sleeping <laughs> i love this wording no sleeping or fainting is allowed <laughs> fainting. <laughs> <laughs> if you faint you're out it starts like okay i'm gonna go to sleep Okay, my next strategy is just faint and <laughs> expire there in the room. The challenger must be monitored and remained or remain under constant supervision at all times. Uh, the challenger is permitted to speak up to one minute every five minutes, uh, and then is permitted to leave at any time. Of course, that ends right. the challenge. And this was optional; said you could do it in the dark or. In the day, but if you're going for the full, I mean, in the light, but if you're uh, going for the full experience, right, like, go for the dark. Yeah. Uh, it said uh, it didn't take long for things to start getting trippy. Took him just five minutes before he started feeling disoriented following following an intense burst of tinnitus in both ears. At the 15-minute mark, he claimed to be seeing lights dancing around him in the room. And after 30 minutes, he claimed to be able to hear the sound of his own bloodstream. Mmm. After he persevered and set the mark at one hour and 26 minutes, uh, his (laughs) closing response, that was effing weird. (laughs) You said negative decibels? Negative. How does that work? I don't. Science is weird, dude. Uh. I don't, I don't know exactly, but uh, de- the measure of decimals is a logarithmic function. So, like, the, uh, the best example is, uh, like, the, the I forgot what this is called, but you have to be twice as loud if you're twice as far, basically. So, that kind of thing. Uh, so, it, it absorbs so much sound that basically, you know, be below measure is kind of where we're at. Crazy. All right, so for your no-diggity situation for all three of you guys, first of all, would you want to try this? That's the first one. I'd like to try it. I don't think I'd succeed, but I th- I think just as an experience, I don't think I'd faint. So you'd say for wanting to try it, 
probably yes no, i would i'd like to experience it but for the sake of no diggity oh your digitometer is saying no diggity okay thank you <laughs> yeah I, know. I was like what are we doing here and i missed the whole assignment Jack jackson i think i could try it for maybe 30 seconds to a minute so no no diggity but i can't even okay. fall asleep without background noise on the tv <laughs> <That's wild. laughs> are you not supposed to fall asleep supposed yeah. to stay awake. brennan yeah. would you uh, want to try the anechoic chamber of silence no <laughs> no okay so uh, I think it, for him i think it sounds cool uh, uh and as far as everything you were describing some of the rules and stuff i almost mm -hmm. feel like you could speak for one minute every five minutes is that what it was yeah that's I would I think it would be worse speaking like using your your minute to speak because our our equilibrium does all kinds of weird things like we experience weird things when we have ear infections mm -hmm. and just being able to like not be able to hear refractions and in, in you know mm -hmm. bouncing off of objects and stuff like I believe the kind of stuff he was experiencing like oh, well, be I, trippy. I believe it too it doesn't mean it doesn't freak me out oh no it absolutely freak me out i would want to try it if given the option my next one was going to be do you think you could last more oh, than an God. hour but oh absolutely <laughs> not I, I could okay actually on that i will say no diggity i'd i'd try to beat the record mm -hmm. i don't think i'd succeed so how, I, how long do you think you would last uh, I probably, if I started experiencing the same things that he did, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't make it past like the like the twenty minute mark. At what point did I say he was hearing his own bloodstream? Thirty minutes, because at least at that point I'm something out. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, fifteen minute mark, seeing the lights. I think I think I could make twenty minutes is probably my max. Yeah. in there, I I can't be trusted around myself. Really in talk silence. four times. <laughs> and if any, anybody's curious about why these things exist, other than just like, um experience they, that is where they test microphones and and stuff like that it's mm. uh, yeah so sure has a fact has one in um not to that degree mm -hmm. but uh they have one in chicago i believe and you can experience the same thing but it's where they test microphones and stuff yeah i don't i don't handle being disoriented very well which is crazy because that's just me all the time i'm just <laughs> walking around trying to catch my vision uh let's know what you think on the eighth floor and center chat line i was very excited i brought that up in the break and you were I'm, yeah <laughs> you were like just went off and i was like okay i'd never heard of this before it sounds cool to try i i haven't thought about that in a long time have you ever thought about doing uh, the sensory deprivation chamber like the, where you're floating on the like the the water thing where you're where you're, uh they put you in the dark and like you're floating on heavily salted water basically i think there's one here in lubbock sounds like a good way to like make someone urinate like i mean <laughs> what right it's like the it's like of the floating version of the hand prank you know oh, when you're asleep oh, laying see. down you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yes i yeah. do uh-huh oh did did he did you pee in the floor <laughs> what did you call it what was it called in the sensory deprivation in the sensory tank? deprivation tank again <laughs> dang it come on guys yeah, the snickers <laughs> over there in that corner uh this from Stephen. Happy Penguin Awareness Day. It is Penguin Awareness Day. I want to contest favorite flightless birds. I like ostriches. Are they flightless? Yeah, I think they are. Funny. I like ostriches. A little funny argument. Give me a lemu emu. I'll take the specific one. All right. What were the lemu kiwis? Emu. Well, uh, that's the our dog's namesake. One of our little street rat uh, kiwi. You have a favorite flightless bird? Jackson, probably chicken. That's pretty good. I'd probably still like the. I'd consider that animal. mostly flightless. Yeah, yeah, mostly flightless. Aren't I mean turkeys are mostly flightless. I guess they can the fly. They could probably fly a little bit more. I guess. Um, he kissed his sister twice. And for Star Wars, yeah, seriously, strange. The more you think about it, um, but it's just not brought up again. Also, is I think that is the weirder part of the whole thing is they just don't address it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's like hanging out in the same room with her there at the end, and like standing and like they're all happy celebrating the victory and stuff. I'm like, you two kissed. You can try to hide it. You can try to ignore it. It doesn't take it away. That lip lock happened forever, <laughs> twice. 
two times. Uh, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Hot Dog said, "Sister kissing." Since when has anyone from Kansas thought that was anything out of the ordinary? Uh, Metalhead says, "I have to go to Louisiana for a custody battle. It's Ooh. so rant twenty three. Oh yeah, man, rant away. Rough. Uh, Bullfighter says, "Rodeo this weekend. Over one hundred forty bulls slash sheep." Yeah, it's uh, rodeo time for a bullfighter. Best of luck to you, man. I delivered, yeah. I delivered dipping dots to the the heart one once. It's apparently like a really big deal, the rodeo and heart. Mm, mm. Or uh, Dal you heart? delivered Dal ice heart. cream? Dippin' dots. Dippin' dots. Yeah. How did that make it there? I wouldn't have lasted for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the freezer with them. <laughs> I would have pulled over a bunch. <laughs> I like the straightforward chocolate dipping dots. Cookies and cream are good, too. It's the bottom line, 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com. This day in sports history when we come back. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Having a good time with you. Hopefully you are as well. Total Friday edition. (laughs) 100.7 The Score. 7 score.com is your, your uh, chair squeaking over there? No, well, yes, what, it what, is. What, what's what's, what's uh, the I'm having in? a hard time it, making it feel like it just feels off. All just right, uh, press that lever and just go really low. That's usually what I do. And okay. So then you look just... like a... There you go. Flint Scott with Josh Fobble. <laughs> Leave it like this for AD. <laughs> yeah, please. Yes. Clint Scott and I approve this message. Jackson Roberts behind the glass taking care of us. So was. Brennan paid employee, Mr. BPE himself. Live from the First United Bank Studio, 30 more minutes with us. At 2.45, it's the most interesting fact of the day, brought to you by Dos Equis. And at 3 o'clock, you can switch it over to Double T 97.3 for uh, Tech Talk. Perhaps a very low-sitting AD on Tech Talk. Also advocate one more time that we do stream all 12 hours of our content on our homepage uh, of 1-800-7 the score and when you do switch double t 973com mm-hmm. it also takes anywhere with a mobile app brought to you by happy state bank uh this on the chat line this was in regards to lucas had the question of the day and he asked if he could go back yes texas Tech's basketball schedule what game would you change the outcome on uh and, and one of the your answer was Kansas. Kansas, and I think Jackson's answer was Kansas. I think, I think you're, you're right. It would be a lot of people's answers. I, yes, so. I think that would be the heavy favorite to be voted as a, as a switch, and, and this in regards to that. If Tech beats Kansas, Bacho and Pop don't get hurt chasing down the guy who came with the ball after the no call and almost certainly beat OU with a healthy team, even if every other game goes the way it has in real life, 2-4 and four is so much better than 0-6, oh which I agree, 2-4. and four. I mean, 0 and 6 right now, because it's not. Yeah, you're 0 and 6 in conference play, which already sucks, right? There's no two ways around it. It just sucks. Um, and it's like kind of a black hole feeling right now around the basketball program. But you add into that again, you haven't beaten anybody good. Like, even in the non conference, you don't have anything to. Okay, well, if we get things going, at least we had that Creighton win, or at least we had that Ohio State win. And part of that's not fair, too, right? When you get like. The Big East, Big 12 battle, usually when you look up and you have a Georgetown, you're going, okay, this is a resume builder. It's not your fault, too, with when you look ahead, the Big 12 SEC challenge. Typically, when it's even though you've played them a bunch and you're kind of used to them, but still, typically, when you play an LSU, that's a, a quad one to quad two type win. Like, that is a good net ranking type win. And you couldn't fix that on your schedule, but that doesn't solve the problem right. of not winning any Big 12 games, but it, it, you still don't have any of that to lean on either. So as far as the 2-4 and four to 0-6 oh and six and that, like, looking back situation, yes, 2-4 and four would feel drastically better. Absolutely. Drastically. Yeah, I think the only other uh, correct answer to that question would just be <laughs> right before the season, before any games have started, you know. Yeah. Blank slate. I'd rather be anything but 0-6. Oh yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got this from uh, Chris, J- Josh, and Jackson. I think this. Uh, Brennan wasn't here either. Any, either of you guys own Crocs? I don't own Crocs. My sister loves Crocs. Annie, I don't. I don't know if you're listening. Probably not. But it's, it's weird. It's my sister. Yeah. Yeah. It's she loves Crocs, man. 
Oh, well, I, I I've got knockoff Crocs that are pretty fantastic. Uh, Chris put a. <laughs> it's weird. No, no, I'm not saying they're weird. How uh, how into it she is. Also, this oh. photo. <laughs> put up a picture. Incredible of a piece of bread in the shape of a croc. You okay? You barely touched her croc croissant. I love that picture, <laughs> but it is horrifying. <laughs> Uh, here's something to consider for most interesting fact of the day. Terrell Owens played for five of the eight teams in the divisional round, with four of them playing head-to-head, uh, Dallas versus San Francisco and Cincinnati versus Buffalo. There you go. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Sneed on the line. I didn't see this. Aha! I knew it was collusion. Shenanigans. <laughs> Not when he was playing. That was a. Brennan was saying that for me. Whenever the, the wins were trying to be kept away from me, that's where the collusion came from. <laughs> Sydney. Yeah, we're not trying to justify Chris's losses. We're trying to justify Clint's your wins. Losses. Just no. the one. Just the one. Uh, Brady can go the Raiders. Steve Young can go Joe Montana, Dan Marino. Any Hall of Fame quarterback can go to the Raiders, and nothing would change. That's still Pat's division. And here the Chiefs aren't getting knocked off anytime soon. The division spent $105 million last offseason to knock them off the pedestal, and we all saw what happened. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And I'm I'm not saying, like, I just think Brady to the Raiders is going to happen. Like, I, I think it's he was going to go to a West Coast-type team and go back that direction. Las Vegas just seems like a good fit. Uh, obviously, clearly, in the QB market. when they told Derek Carr, mm, you're not our starter anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're in the QB market. And I think, uh, like, for the Raiders, it, it, it would make sense. If he wants to go there, why not? Uh, and, and then use him as a, you know, clearly, he's finally showing signs of age. It also doesn't help that he had not a lot of help with the Buccaneers offensively. And that offensive line was both injured and just bad. No running game to lean on. Receivers were inconsistent. You don't have a, a good tight end target anymore. You can go on with the factors. Right. But at the same time, like he's still a very, very capable quarterback, so it would make sense for the Raiders to do that and then also have a capable quarterback with the, now we can find our quarterback of the future. And what a, I mean, what a <laughs> who's better to learn behind than and, a Tom Brady, yeah. right? Um, but as far as that being what knocks off the Chiefs, no, 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 I don't no, think no, so. No, 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 you no. still have to try, though. I mm-hmm. mean, you got to try whatever you can, if it's especially if it comes to that. I do think over the next couple of years, you're going to see kind of what you. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it was in Seattle, where it's the the Legion of Boom like fell apart <clears> and stuff. But it's hard to pay the top players, and you have Travis Kelsey. You already lost Tyreek Hill. You're gonna you're gonna get some when players perform well. You got to pay them well, mm-hmm. and you're. Patrick Mahomes is going to have to start carrying a lot of that load over the next few years. Well, here's the thing. I mean, he already showed. I mean, he he statistically had one of the best seasons that he will ever have this year with Tyreek Hill gone. And, and they're going to do things with Patrick Mahomes. And this was the long term deal that he signed was still mm-hmm. a big number, but it was such a team friendly deal. That's why they could sign Chris Jones to a massive contract. That's why they've been able to keep around a guy like Frank Clark. Uh, and now they've gone over after like younger guys. In the secondary, um, you had to split up that money some way, but they've locked Travis Kelsey down Mm -hmm. where you should have him as a target for Patrick Mahomes through the better stages of his career. And now you're probably going to re-sign Juju Smith-Schuster. And all of that's because his long-term deal was extra team-friendly, where it was also very fair to the best quarterback in the NFL a lot of people's, and I think for me, I mean, for I'd me, agree. clearly the best football player on the planet for you, right like now. all time. For me, all time, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, and so, I, I mean, I agree. Like you, he, he's had to, or he will have to shoulder even more of a load. Clearly, he can. And, and, it's not- and, and the Tyreek Hill bump, that wasn't a little thing because, I mean, it was massive what he was percentage wise of targets for that offense. Patrick Mahomes, wrote, dude, I can, I can still sling it. You know, go out and get me whoever. Valdez Scantling, at times this year, before he started to kind of get dinged up, looked fantastic because of Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Jarek McKinnon, who's been a revelation in the last half of the season, has looked fantastic because Patrick Mahomes knows how to hold on the ball, dance around, and then find him. Like, it, it's been a lot of guys on the back ends of their career. Like, you have a Hall of Famer right now in Travis Kelsey 
Point to another one remotely in that lineup that he's thrown the ball to. Oh, yeah. So I agree with you, but he's shown you that he can't. No, certainly he can, and I'm not saying that he can't, but I'm saying over time, particularly where I'm talking about is these next few years, as these contracts really start to take, like their cap hits really sure. start to come in. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be the skill positions and stuff where that matters because that's not where the contracts go. It's going to be the linemen. And you've seen them draft a lot of, you know, they've they've drafted a lot. So you have mm-hmm. a lot of young linemen who have done particularly well. But as they get into year three, year four, you start looking at those contracts and you have to sign those players. You don't just rotate offensive linemen. You sign them. And again, that's where, like, team friendly. Patrick knows that he needs to be taken care mm-hmm. of. <laughs> Patrick is very well aware that, yeah, he can run around a ton and he can be uh, very, very good in the pocket or outside of the pocket, but you can be a whole lot better if you don't have to worry yep. about it. Um, and to the Chiefs' credit, too, like they've built the offensive line that's been so much better than what it was dating back uh, to the Super Bowl the two Super years Bowl, ago yeah. where, where, again, they had injuries on that, too, which isn't fair, so it's not like it was completely they had just forgotten about the offensive line that season, but still it was like, obvious it was like management needs to take care of this to take care of our guy yeah this has been the bottom line podcast from 100.7 the score go to 100-7 thescore.com for more from the double t sports network